eventually. It'll start one of these days. All right, it says live in the corner. Uh, okay. Can people see me waving my fingers like obnoxiously at the camera? Yes. Well, I can. <laughs> I don't see anything on the YouTube page that, yet. That, that is really uh, interesting. Once you can see this, you'll be hypnotized to enjoy this podcast. You will love it. You will desire it. You will be able to see it once. <laughs> Tell All right, me. I think we're live. I, mean, I can't. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we're live now. Okay. We're live. Okay, sweet. Greetings, every people. This is your cult personality speaking. Tune Critic Y two K's name tunes a name of my game, and I have here today a roundtable review live of Doctor Who series eight. And of course, it's not just me here. Uh, let's see. We have uh, coming up first, Buck Brony. Hey there. This is where I'm supposed to say hi. Good. Hi. We also have Cam Goes Pony. Hello. We have Jitterbug Jive. Yo. And Jester Dorama. Hello. We have quite a team assembled here for Series 8, and I think it's fitting because Series 8 was best. interesting, to say the least. So Not we're going to do our best... We're going to do our best to go through this in a sort of scripted, non-scripted sort of fashion. So we're going to go by first our um, what we liked, what we didn't like, favorite and least favorite episode, what we thought of Capaldi and Clara, and just overall thoughts. So uh, let's get this started. It'll go in order by uh, Buck, Cam, uh, Jitters, Jester, and then me. So Buck... What did you like about Series 8 of Doctor Who? Uh, the main thing I liked uh, was Clara. I think uh, I think before this series, I was kind of sort of not really sure what to think of her. She was sort of a sort of nothing kind of assistant. I didn't really know what to think of her, but she was absolutely outstanding throughout this entire series, I thought. I, I, I think she's up there now as one of my favorites. Uh, I love Capaldi. Again, he's up there now as one of my favorite Doctors already, I think, uh, uh, I'm already thinking he's better than uh, Matt Smith and possibly even better than Tennant. I think he, he, he was probably uh, the best thing about this series. Uh, I don't remember the names of some of the episodes uh, that I liked. Oh, Christ. Um, there were two in particular. Mummy on the Orient Express and the other one I can't remember of, which was kind of an Ocean's Eleven kind of one. Uh, was, oh, that was Time Heist. Time Heist, yes. Loved both of those episodes. Uh, so yeah, that was what I liked about this season. Alright, Cam? Oh, I'll and those two. Alright, so, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to be fanboying a bit through this podcast, because uh, yeah. season, <laughs> season 8 was uh, my favorite, is my favorite season of Doctor Who thus far. Uh, mainly just the things I liked about it is just... Uh, like, there was such a huge increase in terms of, like, production value and special effects and everything. And that, and there's, you know, and it has the same just sort of imagination that's always made Doctor Who so wonderful for me. And I feel, especially with the new special effects, it's really been able to realize some of these new ideas. And I don't know, I, and I like that. And, of course, uh, I think Capaldi's great. Personally, I was really surprised how quickly I got used to Capaldi because... By the fourth episode, you look at Capaldi and you're like, yeah, that's the Doctor right there. Even though, it's honestly, it's kind of hard to believe that I have only that I've only seen him for one season so far. Because I, I, I don't know, I'm already so used to him being, you know, being the Doctor, and it works. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, Jitters. Okay. Uh... I'm going to try not to ramble too much. Um, hold on, let me look at the order of things. All right. Uh, so are we just talking about the uh, everything in general? or? No, we're just, we're just talking about like what you liked in general. Well, what I, I liked. Okay, what I liked. I love Capaldi. Uh, he's probably, next to eight, one of my favorite doctors now um, because he's just full of personality and that old third doctor sass that I liked uh, way back when he was just this grumpy jerk all the time. Um, but you can tell he cares. He just has a hard time showing it, and I really like that about him. Um, 
I'm, I'm kind of tired of all the modern day pretty young doctors that people are obsessed with. I really like him being older and crotchety again, like old man. He's supposed to be a crotchety, weird old man. I mean, he gets older than 2000. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, yes, yeah, it's just like he, I'm tired of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> some of the some of the old um some of the old stuff that was in Doctor Who is coming back, and I really like that because you know when New Who started, they rewrote a lot of stuff that wasn't there, or in and and really messed up the lore. And it looks like it looks like Moffat's trying to make a really good effort to get the old stuff back. It's just taking a while to fix after all the stuff was rewritten in the first place. So uh, that's probably um, my favorite bits about it. Um, do I talk about favorite episodes or is that later? That's later. Okay, so I'll wait. All right, Esther. Well, okay, there was a microphone. Um, what actually? Did I, I meet yours. Did you meet it? Oh, okay, there we go. So what I liked probably the most about the series, this may come as a shocker, but it was Capaldi. I mean, <laughs> I mean it's like he was taking a new different flair on it, I mean, you can kind of tell he was the opposite of Eleven, so it's like, this is actually feeling a lot cold now that I was used to uh, Matt Smith. <laughs> and that was definitely fun to get used to. He actually was a slight bit awkward in the first episode, but he started getting a feel for him pretty quickly as he kind of grew on and moved forward, and he kind of found out how bright and how dark he was, but I kind of like the darker side of him, especially, um, I don't know if, can I slightly spoil towards the end, since we're discussing the whole thing? We can um, pretty much say whatever we want at this okay. point, because um, this is an overview of Series 8, anything okay. goes. So. Okay, I just want to double check if there's going to be a spoiler thing, but one of the things yeah, that probably really kind of, spoilers. Yeah, one of the things I kind of liked most about, about Capaldi, though, was more, towards the season finale when he was actually finally starting to be feel hopeful for the master telling the truth and then he gets really pissed and he finds out Gallifrey isn't where it was claimed to be I was like yeah. ouch that kind of hurts he's actually taking it out of the TARDIS holy crap yeah so I definitely like that and I do like how um, yeah I'm kind of be one of those pitchfork wielding types but Moffat's getting a little bit better consistency now which is also what I'm starting to like <laughs> And that's probably about it for what I kind of like, is just Capaldi and the improvement on how things have gone since he's trying to get more used to things again. I just only worry that he's trying to write off Clara, considering she, it feels like she almost pulled a slight 180 when how she was before. She was confident, she was kind of flirty and everything like that. Now she's all kind of super worried and super attached um, to a shoehorned boyfriend in the story. Yeah. That, that's about it. Yeah, for me... Uh... I was really excited for Series 8. I wanted to see what they could do with Capaldi. And I guess I might as well jump on the bandwagon. Uh, Capaldi makes this uh, quite interesting, I think. Um, like people said, it, it's been like over like, what is it, 2,000 years or so since like um, the little mishaps on Time Christmas. of the Doctor. It was, uh, how do I put this? I like the tone that they're setting for this series. It's helping it stand out from, I think, 5, 6, and 7. This one we have more of a doctor who's just really tired of like all the pain. He's tired of all the stuff he's been through, so he's a lot more a lot more grumpy and crotchety. A little bit more cautious, I think, which is uh, good, because it kind of reminds me of like the, uh, the older doctors. So uh, what I also like is the intro. I oh. love... The yeah. intro. I think yeah. that's one thing we forgot. One of us forgot to mention. The <laughs> intro is great. I love the fact that this just debuted on YouTube, and I I remember saying this like this is a really good intro. People should like you know show this to BBC, and like this should be the intro for the next season. And it was. And that's what happens. <laughs> I don't think you meant there was a intro though. Yeah. That's I don't know, like really something cool. that I. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Ken. Uh, yeah. So with the new intro, like. Uh, I don't know, there's definitely a lot of things I liked about it, like, mostly just with the visuals, because it's definitely something new, because, I mean, for, uh, because, I mean, Doctor Who's about two main things, it's about space and time, and for 50 years, the intro has always been about the space part, and I think this is the first one that's really said, now we got time in here, too, so, uh, that... Well, I thought the maker intro was kind of thought, called the time tunnel. Yeah. The yeah, vortex? Yeah, but... Yeah, yeah, the time board things. But yeah. uh, also, like, also just like the I don't know, like this is a somewhat less popular opinion because I've heard a lot of people hating on it. But the music uh, for the new intro too, I also 
really like it because, uh, I mean, you know, the, doc the Doctor Who theme is one of those songs that, you know, that can survive forever for 50 years, and you can play it in pretty much any kind of style or genre you want, and it's still awesome. But I still think it really works best with the just sort of electronic, you know, like synthesizer. I think... Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, 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 kind no, of no, science no, fiction no, feel, no, because no, for a long time it's been trying to... We all talking at once. We all lag there. Uh, Buck, you go. Yeah, the eighties uh, version of the theme, I think, is still definitely my favorite. Uh, Jerry, you were trying to say something. Yeah, sorry. Um, the uh, I, my only complaint about the new intro, it looks amazing, but the TARDIS is rendered really weird. Um, the the guy who made the video originally, the fan video, rendered the TARDIS better than the official one, and that always bugged me because <laughs> it looks a little bit plastic. But no, the rest it looks beautiful. The song, pr maybe not my favorite, but that's because I hold it up to the Eighth Doctor movie theme. But that was a movie theme, and it was oh, fully right. orchestrated. Was so. <laughs> Yeah. By the way, did anyone notice uh, in the intro for the final episode of the series something? With, with Clara's eyes? Yeah, oh, Clara's yeah, eyes. I saw that. That, that, was, that one's really cute. I like that. That was cool, yeah. Like, and so, it's like, oh, she's a doctor. The intro, the intro has spoken. Yeah, uh, I guess um, the only other thing I liked is that I think the writing... Okay, the writing is sort of a mixed thing for me. On one hand, I liked it. On the other hand, I didn't like it. So I'll just explain why I liked it. I think that the writing, uh, like I said, it was setting the tone for like a different kind of um, doctor that's like playing homage to like the old stuff. I liked the most of the writing for some of the episodes, like the the good episodes that they got right. I love the writing for it. I think um, where you know the writing helps set up uh, Capaldi as the doctor, whereas before. I think it was kind of setting up. It's just it's Clara starring the Doctor as like the sidekick. But they're when the episodes you know get like good writing and stuff. That's I think what I like. Um, I think most so far. It's the writing. It's the intro. It's Capaldi. And now let's <laughs> now let's shift to what we didn't like. This ought to be fun. Uh, Buck, take us away. Oh boy. Are we talking about episodes or? Well, just... no. What we didn't like. Overall, just general things we didn't like. In general, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the sort of general things I didn't like. Evan, get out there. Uh, it was kind of different towards the character of Danny. He, he seemed rather sort of bland and uninteresting. I didn't really understand why the Doctor never liked him, or why he kept thinking he was a PE teacher or something. I didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole arc with uh, him and Clara and the whole thing—it just sort of stopped and didn't go anywhere, I thought. Um, uh, I didn't like in the finale how the Cybermen just sort of didn't really do anything. It was uh, kind of very interesting. Um, it's kind of weird. There's a few episodes I didn't like, but just sort of general things. Um, difficult. Uh, I didn't like more of a focus on Clara's profession as a teacher, really. I, I Sort of didn't think that was a particularly interesting kind. Actually, a lot of the settings they had this season uh, were kind of uninteresting. I thought it's just sort of land areas of nothingness, like um, a tube, an underground station, and uh, the moon, which is kind of blank, sort of bare patches of ground with not much going on. Nothing particularly interesting about them. It has spiders on it. Yeah. Yeah, spiders on the moon. That's what we thought on the moon. Yeah. That's what I watched Doctor Who for. Uh, no, I can't think. There's, there's quite a few episodes I don't like, but just sort of general things of the season, I can't think of much, actually. All right. Yeah. Camp? Okay, so, uh, I don't know, I guess I feel like I'm kind of nitpicking here, but, uh, so, generally, uh, I don't know, like, I guess I'm okay with Danny, although, uh, although I don't know, uh, I was, it was kind of slow for Danny to grow on me, because at first it was like, I don't like this guy, and then... Like, right when I said, I was like, fine, I guess I'm okay with Danny. Then he died. I'm like, well, okay, thanks. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. And then also with the season finale, uh, it did a good job, you know, sort of uh, capping off the season. But, you know, I always want season finales to be, like, really, like, mind-blowing and epic and amazing. And I thought it was pretty amazing, but it 
wasn't really that mind blowing or epic, you know, on the scale of something like uh, the Pandorica opens. But yeah, I don't know. All right. And then oh well, also then also just some of the scenes between like Clara and Donnie and I just said Donnie, but Danny. <laughs> uh, you know, whatever. Did Donnie become Clara the and Danny? Ricky, Ricky, big deal. Same difference. <laughs> Yes, yes. So, yeah, but basically, anyway, <laughs> Clara and Danny, uh, a lot of the scenes with them talking and everything, it got kind of like soap opera and stuff, and I don't know, I didn't really care for that. But Danny, I'm pregnant. Danny, <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, well, when you think about it, Clara, like, has to be pregnant now, because in, uh, listen, in that episode, we saw one of Danny's descendants, and, uh, you know, but Danny died now, so they can't do that later, so they must have already, you know, did it. <laughs> yeah, I think I don't think uh, that's out of the question that they did the deed at some point. Yeah. All right. You know how it is with Doctor Who companions these days. Yeah. All right. Jitters. It's every girl pregnant. Jitters? Oh, sorry, I didn't hear that, but, um, okay, I have a few things, well, more than a few things that I don't like. Yeah. I'll try not to ramble too much, because there are other topics that can get more in-depth. So, I guess the first thing is the, the lack of anything to do with Clara's life, because uh, we don't know who the hell her family is, other than the occasional, oh, awkward dinner, and I guess that's her grandma, and I guess she has an issue with her dad and her stepmom, I guess that's her stepmom, but they didn't really actually specify that it was her stepmom, and apparently the whole thing about her mom dying was only relevant for one episode so that she could throw a leaf at something. <laughs> um, so, yeah, her family, no one gives a shit about her family, and I would like to give a shit about her family, because if you think about back in the um, New Who when it started, even though Rose's mom was kind of bitchy, we still wound up liking her and feeling like they were a family unit. Same with Martha. We, her family were not that great, but we still got that she had a family. And then come, you know, Amy and Rory, their family hardly has any relevance to anything, even though you really want to know about it. And they made this whole plot point about it. Uh, like, oh, she doesn't have parents. Well, now she does. But guess what? It still doesn't change anything in the story at all. And uh, now Clara is just, they're, they're just convenient for a plot thing, and then they're gone. Um, the, just, the other thing that really bugs me is the... Uh, breaking down of her character where, you know, she started out this really amazing character and could have been potentially my favorite companion thus far and has now become so bland that even, you know, Rose at the very beginning of the very first series is a lot better rounded than Clara is at the moment. Uh, Danny and Clara's romance is probably the thing that I hate the most because... It makes no sense. It's instantaneous, and Danny loses his character. He's interesting at first, but then once they get into a relationship, he's basically nothing but throwaway boyfriend. That's that's all his personality is, is defined as the fact that, oh, he's Clara's boyfriend. That's, that's all we know about him, and it's really annoying. Um, and if you really think about it, Danny is more useless than Mickey. He's never been on an adventure. He was never really useful. He didn't get much character development until the finale, where he was better useful dead. But there's only the one time he did the backflip, or sorry, front flip over that one creature, and that was it. Yeah, he did a cool backflip. That's and no, he that, had that was a front flip. Backflip. He did a, he did a flip. He did a dramatic front flip, flip. and that, that that's his character, I guess. And he has apparently PTSD, but not really and uh, nobody addresses it. it there, there was so much that could have been done with his character, but they just skirted over it in favor of, are you with the doctor? Are you with the doctor? Clara, are you with the doctor? Clara, are you with the doctor? Clara, love me. In general, I guess another thing that bugged me, uh, too many uninteresting paper cutout characters. Um, a lot of them, they didn't really make an impact on me. They they tried to, but it just didn't work. I didn't feel for them, uh, especially like Into the Dalek, that girl that was just, you know, oh man, I just lost my brother, and I'm just sitting there going, I don't feel that. I don't feel for you. Why is your brother important? Why are you important? Why do I care? All I get is that you're a soldier, and you're like, me. Um, and it's easy to learn about a character in just one line. Um, okay, 
I'm almost done. Sorry. No, uh, <laughs> the the oh, buckle's going to be the negative one. Yeah, the, another issue that I had is just how predictable the writing has gotten. Because at the very beginning, we get introduced to Paradise and Missy, and it comes back again and again, and you're like, "Oh, look, this is going to be the stuff that shows up in the finale." As opposed to in the past, where we had stuff like Bad Wolf, where you didn't see it coming. That's how you do a twist. You hide little things in there and then have it show up at the end. You don't just shove it in people's faces and say, hey, look, this is going to be the twist, guys. That's that's the, the point of a twist is you don't see it coming. I mean, Fight Club, you don't see the twist at all. But in Doctor Who, you can see it a mile away in the writing. And um, lastly, the thing that I don't like is Clara being made a huge part of the Doctor's life even though she's pretty much not done anything for her own life, which is oh, suddenly she's the reason why he says these things to kids and why he's going off on adventures apparently, and why he's this and this and this and this, and I'm just I don't... So you wrote this character just so that she could marry Sue into his life and be important for the sake of his life, and basically I describe it as She's important for the sake of being important. Other than that, there's nothing important about her. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much my thoughts. All right. <laughs> All right, Jester. Okay, so yeah, he did take a major chunk of what I was ta- what I was going to be talking about. Um, mainly, Danny kind of indeed kind of having a little bit of interest at the beginning, but then he was automatically a boyfriend and constantly checking up on things. He didn't have much involvement, and that was also a part of Clara's one eighty, where it's like, okay, we need to give her somewhat of a solid character, so let's make her get turned around from her all of her sass and flirtatiousness to this worrisome, half lying girlfriend. And I was thinking, oh. Okay, I guess I'll try and, try and see where this goes. Since she was kind of blank to be before when all the other characters were getting more interest, interesting things going on with them. But otherwise, um, one of the things that was also a major like thing that was kind of bugging me still that they haven't really touched on much since like the 10s area was that the world didn't feel ex- too expansive. It was like you jump from section to section in these worlds... But you didn't get much of the wor- out of the world. You didn't get a lot of involvement from pe- like the other characters, the, some of the lore from the world itself. Actually, I know Eleven's era did this a bit, to some, but it's like Twelve is just like, okay, we've got a few characters here and they're gone. We've got a few characters here and they're gone. We've got a few characters there and they're gone. And I remember when characters used to mean something. Exactly. <laughs> Back but, in my day. <laughs> Back in my day, Jen had a whole crew like 20 people. Back in my day, a Doctor Who episode would be seven parts long. You know? Back in my day, we had Doctor yeah, Who with three spin-offs. That was awful. But anyways, uh, the other thing was that um, Missy was introduced way too soon. They said, like, hey, I'm Missy, mistress, master. Oh, thanks, there's the twist. And then that's what really bugged me. And I know I was just watching something in Supernatural. They just tried panning around some... Like Scarlet Redhaired's um, supposed villain, they don't say anything about her, just show her image. But you know she's menacing. It's like thinking, okay, who is this? What are they gonna do? Yeah. And you don't know what they're gonna do. That adds mystery to it. And it's thinking, okay, Supernatural's been doing the same same amount of years you guys have, and right now they're pulling a better villain uh, mystery than you are. So that was like saying that was kind of bugging me about Miss. It was that she was pulled out and introduced. I mean, yeah, if you showed her. Maybe I'd think, okay, who is this? And if you didn't say her name, I wouldn't have figured out the twist so quickly. But um, other than that, um, yeah, I said an expensive world. And the writing, of course. Well, I'm, I'm also worried about the consistency is that now that um, Danny actually got some character devel- a little bit of character development by being a Severman, he's now dead. So did they actually do it? And is the new twist going to be Clara being pregnant, like Amy or something? Or what? So other than that, I was thinking about touching on least favorite episode, but I was going to probably say right at the time, Force of the Night. I hated the new writer for that. I hated how horribly cheesy and campy that was and how useless everyone was, except for the one time they need to flash a tiger away. Because the trees were going to take care of the world. We didn't need to let's do anything. Save, let's say yep. the least favorite episodes for later. Okay, so I did go too quickly on that. Sorry. That's all right. Yeah, I, I, I actually completely forgot about Missy uh, when I was talking about what I didn't like. It's like, I, I did kind of feel with that it was sort of a case of... Um, Let's give the audience something to question about, something to debate on, like forums or on Tumblr or something. So let's just show them something that like doesn't mean anything to us, and just sort of not tell them what it is or something. Let's give them a mystery for the sake of a mystery, basically. 
Yeah, I read in an interview that like Stephen Moffat was just like, yeah, just I was trying to make it look like it was the Ronnie. I was trying to make it look like that and say, nope, it's not. Ah, God damn it, Moffat. I, I love you sometimes, and yet I hate you sometimes. I guess... You really failed. He could have said, I'm the Ronnie, and then gone like, oh, no, I'm the master. I don't know. The master, I really liked the uh, master. I see Sash the master. The master so. at all. All right. Uh, I guess... Well, my turn. All right. Um... Pretty much what you guys were going off of with uh, the most of the complaints, Clara. Now, I liked Clara. I liked Clara for like a, a long time. She was my new favorite companion, especially throughout like season seven. She was like spot on. That was great. Season eight, Clara kind of degraded back to a certain point. And that didn't sit too well with me because I don't think she needed all this like soap opera drama with Danny. Take Danny out of the equation. Just make her be like you know the companion and stuff. And that works out really great for her. I someone think it's pretty organ. good. Wait, what? Sorry? I said, someone get me a soap organ so I can eat those cheesy... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, I really didn't like the whole master turn because it didn't explain anything, really. And I would admit, it was. It, I guess it was interesting to throw like the master thing in like as sort of a shock value thing, but it didn't exactly play out in the end because is the master dead? It, it, did we just waste this whole thing? I think it would have been good if the if Missy was just like you know an independent like villain of sorts, and then just left it at that and continued on to series nine new villain. That would have been fine, I thought. Yeah, the fact that she's the master means they basically have to bring her back at some point. I think, don't they? Yeah, and then they have to bring back the master. At least it doesn't necessarily have to be that regeneration. I mean, the master is just kind of one of those uh, immortal villains who can just show up because that's what he does. Because you know he's one of the villains that has always been around and will probably will always be around. So we might not see Missy again, but we'll obviously see the master. Yeah, the thing happens. was the thing was that like okay, master died. He ended up somewhere in the nether sphere. He downloaded himself into somebody's body and then just rolled from there. I can sort of buy that theory, but that that's probably for like a whole other discussion. Is that, is that the theory? Is that that's, the, I read a theory. I read a theory that basically... Okay, my out. theory is just because, like, since Gallifrey is sort of back-ish, not quite, but, you know, they're there in a different universe, and in the time of the Doctor, there was sort of a connection formed between the two universes. Uh, that might have been all that the Master needed in order to get back from Gallifrey. Well, I do like that they readdressed that, though, because I was thinking, okay, Day of the Doctor, we're going to go, we're gonna look for Gallifrey, and not mention it for the next 12 episodes. Yeah, and then the master has to be a dick, say, oh, yeah, here are the coordinates, go and, go, go and find Gallifrey, and then at the end, it's just like, lol. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Well, well, I, I like that. Yeah, she was that's that. what the master does. The master is a dick. Like, come on. <laughs> was, uh, yeah. Such... So terrible, though. But yeah, also, I guess I really did not like uh, some of the situations that the underlying sort of Clara is like more important than the Doctor sort of thing, yeah. and that didn't sit well with me because they put so much focus on Clara and so little on the Doctor, but when the Doctor got his chances to shine, he did good with that. I was glad about that, so it's not like it was completely overshadowing the Doctor. But I didn't like that it focused so much on Clara in this sort of negative light. If you had given this focus to Clara, say, in Season 7, I would buy that. But the way that you were, I guess, the way that the writers were making uh, Clara did not, like, sit well with me. The same thing with Danny. Uh, same thing with the twist with uh, Missy. It was feeling forced. Yeah, it was really feeling forced. That's what I thought. And I guess the only other thing is that I found some of the situations in certain episodes to be a little ridiculous. Like, and I'm, I'm just going to say this. The moon is actually a giant spider egg. I struggled with that idea. Cam, I messaged you. I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? Is this, suppo is this supposed to be my Doctor Who logic? The moon is just a spider egg. Boop, there goes the spider, another moon. Totally no effects. The world didn't, like, whatever. Okay. Sure. Okay. It's just the believability and some of the arcs that they had with the episodes was really, really hard to believe and to, to understand and comprehend. Suddenly Santa. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Especially at the end of this, I'm just, I'm, I remember. Like, this is been like that. Wait, no, I'm sorry. It's just like, this is my exact reaction. All right, so what do we get? <laughs> it's a Christmas special. I forgot. 
Christmas like, special. Yeah. You find the Christmas special. Oh, God. I don't Seven. know. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Cause, yeah. no, I was going to say, yeah. one but more thing as, I didn't you know, like. But as, all the com- as, but as the comments on my channel always remind me, I'm just uh, an overly enthusiastic, delusional fanboy, so... <laughs> You were saying, oh, that was, yeah. One more tiny thing was that I was I forgot to add this was that the special effects I thought were a bit of a small downgrade from what they were previously, because on the Cybermen that smoke was like really campy when they had the jets flying off and everything. I was remembering from like a prior season, they were a little at least a little bit better, but it's like this time I'm thinking it was a little bit lower budget because okay the TARDIS wasn't fully rendered with a lot of shadows and now the smoke is like really fakey looking like you would see on like a 2000 something show. Which might have been good for when they start off in two thousand something, two thousand five. Two thousand five, yeah. So that, that's just what I generally disliked. So I also want to be clear: I don't hate series eight. I think it's great. I think it's a great introduction for Capaldi. But like every Doctor Who season, it has its flaws. Thankfully, not so much in this season. I think so. Now, uh, before we get to the next part, I put a straw poll down in the uh, description for the video where you can vote on, like, your favorite Doctor Who episode. And actually, for those that already did, I'm going to go quickly check it right now and see what episode they think is the best. And according to them, the best is a tie between Robot of Sherwood and Listen. Huh. What? Interesting. Interesting, because Robot of Sherwood is my favorite episode. Those those would be, like, my third and fourth favorite episodes, so... Hmm. Yeah. So I'm up the episode list. That's really weird. Yeah, and at the this one was good, but then it kind of disappointed me at the end. I, I really liked Listen because it was it was clever. It was very very good atmospherically, yeah. But like the end just kind of left more questions and left more Clara being part of thing that shouldn't be part of. Blah. Yeah, and at the bottom of the list. The, the three episodes that nobody voted on were Time Heist, The Caretaker, and In the Forest in the Night. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. I don't know. I was, I was, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I was okay with the forest one. I thought, right. I, I thought the forest one was really sweet. I don't mean sweet as in like, duh. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, Buck, <laughs> take us away. What was your favorite episode of season eight? Uh, my favorite episode, probably Time Heist, I would say. Just sort of a really sort of clever kind of bit of writing. I, I love the stories that sort of try to keep you a little bit in the dark about what's really going on in the story, and uh, they don't quite tell you everything. You have to sort of figure it out along with uh, the characters. I thought the little team they got together uh, was a good little sort of uh, cast of characters. Um, great twist at the end. Actually, it's been a while since I've seen it. I'm trying to remember what else, what else I liked about it. Um, uh, great sort of setup of uh, the sort of Ocean's Eleven, just trying to sort of uh, figure everything out. Um, and they had really nice, uh, you know, I thought that episode was also a good example of the special effects, because, like, the CG on the weird, like, brain-sucking monster thing was... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um... I can't remember anything else about it, unfortunately. Um, the other one I liked though was uh, I forgot its name. Oh, Mummy on the Orient Express again, another yes. great twist. That was and, a great uh, one, I thought. How how do you defeat a monster you can't see? That's, that's a, a great little sort of dilemma mystery thing. That's so clever. And kind of kind of another interesting twist on a sort of murder mystery as well. You know, you yeah. know what's doing the killing, you just don't know how to defeat it or how to deal with it. I love that. And the uh, the Jelly Babies came back. I think that's the first time in the new series that they've had the Jelly Babies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and he had them like... He had Jelly Babies one. He had them in like a case this time instead of like a bag. Yeah, it was good. I like that. <laughs> the, the Master did have Jelly Babies once in the finale, oh, but that was... Yeah. Ah. All right. Uh, that all you got, Buck? Or? Yeah, that's, that's about it. All right. Cam, okay. go ahead. Okay, so... My favorite episodes, uh, it's a tie between uh, between the Mummy on the Orient Express and a Flatline, which is interesting because both of those are actually written by the same writer, and these were, and those are their first two episodes. So uh, 
I don't know, like, both of them, like, it's the episodes, they're the kinds of episodes that just seem to have a whole lot of imagination behind them. And it's the, and, you know, I, I've said before, you know, imagination is, the imagination is why I like Doctor Who so much. And I like that, because, you know, it's a mummy on, on like, a replica Orient Express in space, and it turns out it's all part of a plot to try to get a bunch of people together to try to figure it out, that, like, this weird, like, sort of sentient AI put together to try to figure out and reverse engineer the mummy. And then, you know, for, and then for Flatline, uh, you know, again, that's just uh, n nothing, something else that's really clever. It has the beings in the two-dimensional universe trying to sort of work out 3D. And then I just love that bit, you know, towards the end where they do figure it out and they have these, like, weird, like, zombie things going. And uh, the, the CG on those especially looked really cool. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's the kind of thing where, honestly, like, it's episodes like that that are the reason why I'm kind of reluctant to always say that Doctor Who is science fiction. I always prefer to just call it, like, more of science fantasy because it's honestly just, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm a big <laughs> fan of those episodes because I like all the imagination and stuff behind it. All right. Oh, before I forget, uh, somebody in the comments wanted our quick opinions on the death of Osgood. Oh, uh, I I liked how, I actually liked how that was done because I I think you know the fact that it was done so completely unceremoniously and everything for a character that you know I I kind of for a character that I kind of liked and everything and a character that had just been hinted at at perhaps being a good companion for the Doctor and I think the fact that it was that the Master just offed her so unceremoniously. Uh, I, I like that because it really just shows how evil the master is. It's like I don't care if this person is like a really important character that everyone cares about. It's like I'm killing them because I want to. So there. Yeah, exactly. I have I have mixed feelings about that because yeah, she's a character that everybody really liked, but she was also sort of a representation of the fandom. Uh, yeah. And that it, it, yeah. it, it that kind of bugs me a little bit. But that's just because uh, Moffat's kind of done that with Sherlock, too, where he's made a character that's a representation of the fandom be put in a bad light or get killed or something bad happens to them. But at the same time, I also was clapping and saying, congratulations, Moff, you finally killed a character we give a shit about. <laughs> of course, they could bring her back somehow. You know, you know what it's like with Doctor Who. They, they could find some way to bring her back. Yeah, yeah it's supernatural. It the main character's never really familiar. Really 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 microphone. I was going to say, yeah, so they're kind of like pulling like the whole supernatural thing. The main characters die a lot, but they never really die, so they kind of come back eventually. <laughs> before it's the teleporting device that was like in the uh, finale of the season one. Yeah. Uh, so, Jitters, what was your favorite episode of season okay. eight? Um, I have three favorites, but I, I guess I'll talk about my top two, but I'll mention the, my top three is Flatline, um, uh, Robots of Sherwood and uh, Mummy on the Orient Express, but uh, Mummy on the Orient Express is third just because they uh, have that random conversation between Clara and uh, that girl about boys, and I was just like, oh, we didn't need this conversation at all. Thank you. But, um, no, the rest was really good. Uh, but, no, my favorite is definitely Flatline, um... Because, yeah, it was super creative. I was sitting there going, this is some Vashta Narada shit right here. We have not <laughs> had something like this in a long time. I was so tired yeah. of things like, hey, look, look, weeping angels again. Let's make them less terrifying. <laughs> and the silence, the silence, that was scary, right? You guys really were afraid of the silence. Let's bring them back over and over and over and make them less scary every time by explaining what they are and stuff. Because... Yeah. Let's just completely forget that the fear of the unknown is the strongest fear that people have. <sighs> so, yeah, bringing back monsters that were actually terrifying, um, that you could really do nothing about, uh, was really, really intense. Clara was wonderful in the episode. Thing Doctor was great, and by that I mean his hand crawling around out of the freaking TARDIS. Yeah, that was uh, the tiny TARDIS was the best, and Clara trying to pretend to be the Doctor was pretty hilarious, too. Like, she was really on top of her game in that episode. The Doctor was at his best. There was hardly any Danny. 
Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I hate him more than Mickey. It's really bad. I'd rather hear p pizza than Danny going, Clara, are you lying to me? Uh, yeah, why did he have to call her up midway through the episode like that? Uh, yeah, just, um, just, just like, hi, I'm in the drama. Episode, so I don't funny. know. Yeah, yeah, and um, I guess I'll make a very short commentary on Robots of Sherwood and why I like that one so much, is the writing was hilarious. I, I was laughing so much in that episode, and I was really I was really into the episode. The only thing I didn't like was the whole, again, introducing the whole robots going to paradise thing. That, 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 that repeated, and I was just, okay, we get it. This is the finale. Go away. <laughs> but, yeah, no, Flatline. So you're man, nobody cares about you. <laughs> Flatline really might good. might Not be up there with one of my favorites in the entire series, only um, second to Midnight. So, mm. yeah, it was, it was pretty Ooh, good. That was a good one. All right. Jester? Um, also, I do have a bit of a similar line. Um, probably in third was Robot of Sherwood because not only was it pretty funny, it also was able to um, mix in a lot of that fantasy along with making it believable, thinking, okay, so this is kind of one of those things that maybe could have happened and it's actually seeming kind of believable now. And I thought I really liked it for that kind of aspect, and I was also a fan of Robin Hood as a kid, so I was thinking, oh, sweet, that's kind of awesome. Mm -hmm. and, but then in second, it was uh, Flatline because that was also very creative in how they were making new um, inventions, new villains, and actually did involve a little bit more people from the world, so it didn't feel like it was just Doctor and Companion, random guy for a single episode. It felt like it was pulling in a group of people, so it felt like it was more dire. Um, probably, in, probably in first would probably have to have been um, the... I'm looking at a list, sorry, so I can make sure I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, Death in Heaven, um, the finale, second part of finale, mainly because it brought a lot more character development onto the characters who kind of... Saw, seeing, we saw how much the Master has deteriorated over time, getting pulled back out of another time lock, or however he, sh he or she did it this time. Um, also, Cyber Danny was actually a bit more interesting than regular Danny at that point, because you're thinking, oh, he's kind of dead, he's asking for help, that's kind of dark and kind of hurting me a little bit. Yeah, it was dark. It was really, it, it, you could feel that kind of emotion, at least. Yeah. That's the only and, time they gave a shit about Danny. It's just like... Yeah, that's yeah, not, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not too, on Cyber yeah. Danny. I like how they had that, because, you know, he looked, you know, he definitely looked like he was dead. Like, you know, like his skin Old was all washed out, and, you know, it had, like, the sort of, like, parts of the suit kind of, like, pulling it back and everything. And yeah. I, I like that. It, it definitely had that really eerie, creepy look like he's dead to it. That's cool. It's like saying, please kill me, please kill me. I was like, please okay, this is kind of a board game complex. It kind of hurts. <laughs> but, um, yeah, actually, my, because I actually think as a friend of mine, actually decided to make a joke about this. You know, like, if they ever do, like, Cyber Danny, I'm pretty sure he's going to be more interested than this, Danny. And I'm pretty sure he was laughing when he saw that scene. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so Cyber Danny actually gave some final developments, but it still adds a teeny bit of mystery of when they did the do in order to get their, um, their descendants. Missy is actually thinking, okay, you're actually calling out the doctor and a lot of stuff here, and the doctor has to stand back and think, wait, wait, I don't want this, I don't want this. You always wanted this. All I want is my friend back. And I was thinking, yeah, that's kind of true. They were friends in the beginning before they kind of incidentally backstabbed each other a few times. And I was thinking, okay, that is pulling back from the old series. I do like that a little bit about them. And then he was thinking, and the doctor is finally realizing what kind of person he is this time. He's a kind of bit of a dummy for a lot of things, but he's the doctor. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's like it, a lot of it pulled a lot of things together, and, of course, there's a few shockers with the kills. I didn't really like that one um, darker-skinned guy. He seemed kind of dumb that was in that uniform and everything. I was thinking, when the Cyberman got him, okay, you're dumb. You're going to die anyways. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, I did like also one more thing was um, the Doctor being placed as president kind of over the whole world and thinking, okay, he might be him, and I was thinking, nah, they probably have someone else, and he's realizing, like, thinking, oh, crap, I am the president of the world now because I keep saving it so much. And yeah. I like that. It's, like, it's an idea so stupid that only Unit could come up with it. So that's yeah, like, right. Yeah, one thing I didn't <laughs> quite get about that: to be the president of the United States, you have to be born in a, in the United States. So to be president on a, of Earth, wouldn't you need to be born on the Earth? Yeah, well, that's politics. Who knows <laughs> humanity <laughs> better than humanity knows itself? Is like the doctor yeah. does. Maybe. Yeah. Cam, here's how you explain all this shit. Wibbly wobbly, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey bullshit. <laughs> 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 
But I'm still, but yeah, oh, um, I'm still curious about if that was a teleporter beam or whatever that um, Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart shot uh, Missy with. Oh, You're that, it was... that was, yeah, I don't know, I just thought that was neat where they, where they brought back Lethbridge Stewart and then they had the doctor. Yeah, that was great. Was also... Yeah. Because he yeah. actually is dead. No. Yeah, that's that. That's about it for me, though. I was only kind of thinking, okay, that was a blue beam, not a red beam like before. Was that a teleporter? Yeah. Yeah, and then also, uh, actually, just one more thing to add on to that you're talking about, because uh, I thought Death in Heaven did a good job sort of wrapping together all the yeah. themes yeah. of the season, because the season had the very dominant theme of the Doctor of the Doctor's morality, because, you know, like, right away in the season, in the very second episode, he asked Clara, am I a good man? And eventually Clara told him, like, I don't know, but I think you tried to be. And eventually that was, like, the conclusion that the Doctor reached in Death of Heaven, where he said, you know, I'm just an idiot traveling around in my blue box, helping out, you know, trying to help out where I can. And yeah. That was a nice little bit of closure yeah. for once. <laughs> yeah, it was good. For me, um, okay, <laughs> Uh, my three favorite episodes are, uh, by the way, the, the I think the poll updated. Robot of Sherwood is still at number one. Now it's Mummy on the Orient Express, Flatline, Listen, Dark Water, Death in Heaven, Deep Breath, Into the Dalek, Time Heist, Kill the Moon, and The Caretaker. And Forced in the Night still has zero votes. That, yeah. that, that's just surprisingly close to how I would rank them, actually. Yeah, that, that does... But, except I'd put, yeah. except I'd bump up into the Dalek a bit, but yeah. yeah. Okay, so... Uh, let's see. I think when I started watching uh, Robot of Sh um, Robots in Sherwood, I think uh, at that time I was still kind of iffy on Capaldi because I'm just I'm I remember two episodes in I'm just like I'm trying to like you I'm trying but it's just it's really hard to and then Robot of Sherwood came along and I'm like okay you're the Doctor okay like, I still like, I like Matt you. better but you're an acceptable replacement. <laughs> So, uh, Robot of Sherwood was great, I thought. There was a lot more fun to it, I think. There was some good action. Uh, there was... I, I love the Robin Hood uh, character to it. The um, Robin Hood character, wow. Just... <laughs> the guy who played Robin Hood was great. Um, what else? Uh, it reminded me of Men in Tights a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was uh, a comedic episode, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it was a comedic episode. Yeah, I like where they were going with it. It seemed a bit silly, long though, time too. before that, Doctor Who, like... Towards his end, Matt Smith was just getting increasingly, ooh, dark, gritty, er. and then, like, and Doctor Who was, you know, getting gradually dark, and I thought Robot of Sherwood was a nice break, because you have a nice, comedic, lighthearted episode again. I like that. Yeah. It's a very safe episode in that sense. Yeah, because we all, because Doctor Who, I was noticing, was getting darker and darker and darker and darker, and I'm like, okay, Jesus can we get some light up in here just a little bit, maybe? And when they turn on a few more, I can turn the switch. Yeah. Yeah. And also, then there are big sunny forest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. My uh, second favorite would probably be um, yeah, Mummy on the Orient Express because I love murder mysteries. I love stuff like you know, um, I guess Clue kind of reminds me of that. But the the way they went at it was really interesting. How they introduced the mummy and stuff, and I thought to myself, wait a minute. Didn't Matt, the Matt Smith doctor say something about the Orient Express? And I thought, ooh, is Matt Smith... No, he's not. Okay, never mind. I got my hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> it was the mummy in the science car with the touch. Yeah. And you know, it was funny. Uh, this is just a real quick, uh, real quick story. Okay. I was writing this little uh, fanfic with um, my friend Joey, and I was we were writing an episode, and... I thought, okay, how about we have a train in space with, like, a murder mystery sort of thing to it? And I, and I decided to, like, base it a little bit off of Doctor Who. Now, mind you, this was, like, about a year ago. So I thought, okay, this would be really cool if Doctor Who did, like, you know, a train in space sort of thing. And then when I saw this episode, Joey messaged me. He's just like, you had to go and predict Doctor Who, didn't you? <laughs> I thought that was cool, though. Like, a, a train in space. I've always wanted to see that, like, in Doctor Who because I thought that would be perfect. And it worked out really well, too. It, I, I think that was the episode that finally cemented that Capaldi is the Doctor. And it's just the way he figured it all out, the whole mystery to it, how he handled it, how Clara handled it. I thought mm -hmm. that was great, too. And lastly, yeah, I'm going to have to go with Flatline as well, because Flatline really brought out, I think, a lot in Clara in the right way, I think. Clara finally got to, you know, 
not be, I guess, so focused on the drama. She was just like, okay, I'm going to be the doctor for a day. Let's make this work. And I thought it was also comedic, too, because nothing says funnier than, like, a teeny tiny TARDIS. I'm just like, okay, yeah. I have to resist. I have to resist making the honey we shrunk the TARDIS joke, okay? Because <laughs> everybody <laughs> else has probably done it at this point. But um, I liked that. I found it was also a great, like, comedic episode that also tied in something new we haven't seen before that actually seemed genuinely frightening. I like that idea. And um, what else? I didn't catch the name of what they called the monsters at the end. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think they ever really had a name for them. I think it just was the, the boneless. The boneless, right? Oh, okay. Boneless. That's what the, that's a weird name, but I guess it kind of works. Um, but yeah, those three are the three episodes from series eight that I think finally you know put Capaldi as a great doctor. Now it's still for me. It's still Smith, Tennant, Eccleston, Capaldi. It's not. It's probably not going to change. But I like that the episodes were able to put Capaldi in the right sense. I think now that. We've, we've established Capaldi, finally. It took a while, but we finally got it. All right. Uh, now, least favorite episodes. This is where we're probably going to be stuck for a while. So, Buck, what was your least favorite episode? Uh, I almost kind of um, want to say uh, Flatline, almost, because there's a few things I didn't like about it. Because um, you all seem to sort of like it. I don't think it was quite my least favorite, though. Um, but I think my, probably my least favorite was the caretaker, just because mm. I'm generally sort of not keen on uh, these episodes that just sort of take place in present day Earth. It's just not, nothing particularly interesting. Uh, I don't like this focus on Clara as a school teacher. I don't think that's a particularly interesting part of her life. I don't really want to know anything more about her as a teacher. <laughs> Danny, um, he's basically just sort of there as the person she's in a relationship with, and nothing else. The Doctor kind of doesn't like Danny for the sake of not liking him, basically. There doesn't seem to be any kind of particular reason behind it or anything. I think it was because you didn't like... Okay, considering the last episode, I think, with the soldier part, I, I guess he didn't like the fact that, like, uh, Danny was a soldier. Like, into the Dalek, like, the one person just like, hey, can I come? And he's just like, no, you're a soldier. No. So I guess maybe that's why he didn't like Danny? That's that's what I yeah. get from it. Yeah, he, he mentioned that he really doesn't like soldiers, so... He doesn't like the things that remind him of the stuff that he's ashamed of. He's always been like that, but he always yeah. finds something new to be ashamed of in each life. Right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, continue, Buck. Yeah, um, I think mostly it was just sort of a kind of nothing kind of plot. And nothing really grabbed me um, of any real interest. Um, and I think also Kill the Moon, uh, just because, oh, the, uh, again, the, um, the kid character, I forget her name, was not a good addition at all. Yeah. Not a special one. Sorry? Say again? She, she's the not special one. The not special <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, the, um, uh, the, uh, the other two members of the crew, uh, they weren't particularly interesting, and I think the writers probably just understood that quick because they just killed them off quite quickly. Yeah. Uh, the moon is an egg? What? What the hell? <laughs> That's just like they pulled out of their ass. It makes no sense at all. Okay, so no tidal waves, no end of the earth, no nothing? Okay. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also, I really don't like plots of you were never in any danger in the first place. Was It's basically the twist at the end. It's like, well, what the hell was I even watching the episode for then if nothing was at stake? Yeah. Uh, oh, and also, um, Clara has the people of the earth put up for kind of a vote to destroy the Earth or not uh, by turning out their lights. Um, wouldn't a lot of people be out of power now since, you know, there's supposed to be weird things going on down on the Earth? Uh, and also, she only works like about an hour or so, so people on the other side of the Earth are not going to get a chance to vote for that, this kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some of them are asleep. <laughs> yeah, so, so, some of them are today at the moment. Uh, so, yeah, I, I did not like Kill the Moon at all. Any uh, other episodes, or is that it? Yeah, I think that's about it. All right. Cam. All right, so, uh, yeah, my least favorite was probably The Caretaker, uh, probably because, like, it started out uh, what with what I think could have been kind of interest, because, you know, it's the doctor doing his whole sort of, I'm trying a really bad job going undercover like he always does, and I thought that was, I thought that was kind of funny, and, you know, 
And I thought it could have been interesting, and I like, you know, I like shooty robots, and that one had a shooty robot in it, so that was cool. But <laughs> uh, just like the then, but then like the last half of the episode, uh, it just it it pretty much just became a soap opera at that point. And then I was just waiting. It's like, come on, I want to see the. I want to see see the robot with lasers come back because that was cool. I I like I like the laser robot. But now, but for the last half of the episode, I was just watching a kind of crappy soap opera. So, yeah. yeah and then also for Kill the Moon, that's probably my third least favorite, or a second or a third. But um, I don't know. Like the thing is that like I I with Doctor Who, I have a really high suspension of disbelief. So there's a lot of stuff. I'm willing to say, yeah, okay, I'll buy that. But even for me, uh, Kill the Moon stretched that just about to its limit. Because at first I was hoping it would be something fairly simple. It's like, cool, space spiders on the moon attacking the space station and stuff. That's cool. I can dig that. And then just trying to, like, moves an egg. I'm like, okay. And then it did this weird thing with getting humanity to vote. I'm just like, I don't know anymore. So, yeah. yeah. I remember when oh, they tried man. Space Spiders, Apollo 18, or was it Apollo, no, Apollo 13, that went over really oh, Apollo 18. Apollo 13, they didn't even land on the moon. No, 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 there was that one horror movie, Apollo something, was it Apollo, Apollo 18? Wasn't, Apollo 13 was the, like, true story one. So. Apollo, oh, 18, Apollo 13 was a good one. <laughs> Tom Hanks. True story always involves spiders. Yeah. Alright, Cam, is that it, or? Yeah, that's just about it. Alright, Jitters? Okay. Nuclear uh, bomb incoming! Okay, yeah. Um, my least favorite is definitely in the Forest of the Night. Because, you know, I had some issues with episodes like Listen, but it was only because the ending wasn't something that I, I liked. But they, they were issues, but they weren't entire, oh my god, this episode needs to end right now. So for that, that was definitely in the Forest of the Night. It probably is my least favorite episode of... All of New Who, in fact, uh, it's worse than Fear Her for me, and uh, that's worse that's. Than Love and Monsters. I, I actually kind of like Love and Monsters, but that's just because it was so ridiculously stupid, and it was supposed to be ridiculously stupid. So. I kind of like it too. I mean, it, it doesn't it, it, really feel yeah. like a Doctor Who episode, but at the same time, it does. So it like... was just there because it was filler because we were just given a really dark episode, and they were like, "Hey, here, have something fun, and you're not supposed to take it seriously." And when you look at it like that, it's not so bad, but. It, it, it was supposed to be bad, basically. Yeah, let's have this an episode was, where we this... kill off Moldy Myrtle's character from Harry Potter. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it was supposed to be bad. Like, I think that was the whole point. It was supposed to be cheesy and bad. But in this, they were trying to be good, but it just was not good. Um, the reasons... I, I already did a review of it. I'm just probably going to read off a little bit rather than ramble, because I want to be an order with things. So, um... The, the first thing that I noticed right away was the really horrible, unnecessary wide-angle lens at the beginning that was mm -hmm. going all over the freaking place, and I'm like, I can't, I can't, I'm dizzy, why is this here? And it never showed up again, ever. So I have no idea why it was there in the first place. Um, you use that kind of thing to show, like, some kind of tension or something's following you or something, but that never really went anywhere. So completely unnecessary wide-angle lens. That was really bad cinematography. Um... The kids were really badly written. I do not like horribly written children. It's really... They were really, really, really bad. Kids do not talk like that. And, and Fear Her... I thought that was the worst written kid in Doctor Who, but these were a lot worse. And um, yeah, there was a whole they, bunch they of them. All right with, with writing kids, like... Um... What was that? Um, what's a good Doctor Who episode involving kids? Uh, the, the Rings of a Cotton. There. There's one. Rings so they know how to, but it's oh, just yeah. Fun. That's actually one of my all-time favorite. Yeah, yeah, that was a really good episode. But like, they've they've had episodes where kids have been written well, but this was just not one of them. It was it was all of them were written really flat, boring. Oh, let's just talk about stuff like selfies and oh no, she's gonna die and stuff because like I'm a kid and oh that one's special. She's special because they say she's special and. Um, it was they, like one they, of those bad live-action Disney movies. Or, or, or directly yeah. stating what their mental flaws are. Like, oh, I don't have an imagination because Miss Oswald said so. And I'm just, what? Or, or oh, no, I'm going to have one of my fits or something. And I'm just, can you not? Can you, you, you're your kids. You're not going to be aware of your mental flaws, okay? Uh, or, or, oh, no, he has anger problems and she's talky and stuff. So 
the kids were all basically defined by their problems rather than the fact that they were children, um, and that really bugged me. Uh, you know, they. Uh -huh. I know a line that really bothered me was uh, when they were like, "Oh yeah, they're they're are they fighting? Oh, that's love. People fight. Uh, and it's just no. That's that's just not how kids talk to each other." It's, Maybe teenagers or maybe, you know, old people. But they, they were kids talking like old people, and that bugged me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, 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 the message about the girl who had, you know, the, the mental disability and, oh, you shouldn't be giving her her medicines because you guys never listen. And it's just kind of giving that message that giving kids medication means you're not listening to them. And that's not a very good message to give out because there are kids that need to be on medication, and it is important, and they're not all going to be magically talking to aliens or whatever. It's just no. It's it just was you, a can't, you can't expect it. You can't expect a kid to start talking to an alien because then it's just gonna be like, oh my god, oh my god, alien, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, and and it's just you know, it's compl it's it's kind of disrespectful. I can get the whole you know, maybe if they said that oh she's different and the medication wasn't the thing that was that was what she needed, but the fact that that the doctor was giving this lecture about how people never listen to kids and that medication is a way to silence them was just no, you don't do that. Um, that, you know, that, that's a bad message for kids, bad message for people in general. Um, Pink and Clara, again, no chemistry. They were really freaking boring. He was really controlling, and she just kind of was, oh, he's so hot, with the kids right there. And I'm just, can you, can, can you not? Can, can you not? You guys just, I just wanted to throw up half the time they were talking to each other, because it just did not work. Um... The pacing was probably the worst thing for me because everything was very moment to moment, matter of fact. Everything was very. It, it felt like a kids' show being written out, and everything That's was. That's what sort I was of, saying. Yeah, happy dappy, happy dappy. Everything is okay. Writing, and then overall, the entire thing wasn't necessary because they weren't needed for anything. So it was another one of those, oh, no one had to do anything. And and they didn't handle the situation well at all. This is a whole the whole world's covered in plants. There's nobody running around on the streets in a panic. Uh the news just kind of talks about it and says, "Oh yeah, just stay inside." As if everybody in the entire world would be able to do that. <laughs> um and 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 the uh, the 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 problem of oh there's some animals that got out of the zoo for no reason other than to scare some kids and make Danny shine a flashlight I guess oh tiger like, Ooh, but like, wild tiger it's like Ooh. if this is happening tiger, if this is happening why aren't there authorities out trying to contain the freaking animals no they're there trying to burn down a freaking forest that's covering the world because forest fires are totally a great idea right. What the well, hell? Control the controlled forest fires are definitely a yeah, thing. Yeah, but like it yeah. is a worldwide forest, and they're just thinking that fire is the first thing to do. Why aren't they? Why didn't anyone think of I don't know, like wood chippers or things? But <laughs> it, yeah, it, it was just very slow. Half the time, I didn't enough, care. Absolutely. Everything felt everything felt very matter of fact. Um, I guess the last thing that I really said in my review is the whole episode, nothing happens to make you care. No one had any sort of sense of peril. The the fake-out sacrifice Clara tries to make has no impact. The solution was pretty much do nothing, so nobody had a point. Dialogue was written with a lot of flat cliches, and it was really bland, and it feels like you're watching a watered-down kids' show. Everything was bland, cheesy, boring, and interesting, underwhelming, unnecessary, and uh, the wolves were only there to make a trailer that had a Red Riding Hood reference in it, yeah. and the tiger was there to make a tiger poem thing and make Danny look cool or something, and the whole world covered in trees and no one reacting, no one's actually coming out, no one's stranded, there's no hysteria. There's no sense of peril at all, and it just there was no point of the episode. So that's kind of what I felt. Um, the only point was to have that little thing between Clara and the Doctor at the end that was supposed to be sweet, but didn't really feel like it was to be taken seriously at all because you could tell right away, oh, it's just going to be solved. Yeah. So, like any others, or is that just it? Uh, that's. I think that's that's. That's it for because again the other ones my issues are usually just small things like oh Clara just having 
boy talk with random woman because I guess that's all women talk about when they're talking to each other is boys and uh, the uh, boys yeah boys and um, <laughs> like most of my issues have to do with characters and and it, 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 it I I'm thinking yet. Yeah, I kind of enjoyed Caretaker, but that was just because I enjoyed the Doctor being a freaking idiot the whole time. But um, I just can't find anything good that I liked in the in the Forest one. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I was kind of annoyed uh, by um, that scene at the end where the sister sort of just comes out of nowhere at the end, and I'm like, Oh, yeah, what the hell? Yeah, that that was something uh, too. Yeah, that was, was like sort of, um, that was apparently a plot point. Yet? Yeah, that was apparently a plot point, but they just kind of offhandedly mentioned it, like, oh, where's my sister? Oh, you, you're missing your sister? Okay. Oh, look, it's my sister! <laughs> yeah, Wait, your you're sister. Comes out of nowhere. Alright. Jester, what was your least favorite episode of season 8? Um, well, I was gonna say, um, well, I had a minor thing was, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll get into it in a moment, but well, my thing I had was with listen towards the end was that there was this mysterious being under the under Danny's blanket as a kid. It disappears. Okay, I'm wondering what that is. And then they get to that future descendant. That thing is coming in. Thing didn't come in. But apparently, at the end of the episode, it was nothing at all. Just an imagination opening a door and making a body walk out of a room or something. I think. Well, no. Okay, uh, hang on, I'm going to have to object to that, because for every, like, weird supernatural thing that happened in that episode, immediately after they provided an explanation for what it could be, instead of being a weird supernatural thing, like, after that they asked, like, wait, did we just, like, tell, like, some random kid playing a prank that, oh, we come in peace and everything, and... This is like maybe, but I didn't want to risk it. And then they're saying, "Oh well, it could be noises." You know, they always say, "Oh, that's the pipes and everything." Oh, because you know, there's pressure differentials all over the ship and things. And then like what that. opened the door? The doctor opened it. He unlocked it. Who opened the door? But who is you? But I was gonna say, well, then why was there like like actual rhythmical knocking then? I don't know. See, that's a question. Will be timey wimey stuff. Yeah, of course, yeah. and it was kind of like leave a loop, a plot hole. But yeah, I probably would have to kind of follow in line with um, Force and I being my least favorite episode. Basically, I'm based on all everything that Jitters was saying, pacing, character-wise. These kids are like so overly cheesy, and like, oh, let's see, let's kind of go into Tide of Tardis where we kind of have this one wide angle pan each kid, like it's a freaking five year old's movie. And then they kind of like all are chatting amongst each other when they're drawing this little picture or some saying some kind of thing with the forest, or I don't know, but then. Then they do all these fake out fade outs, uh, fake out fades, and then at the end, then you got like, oh, it's the sister, and then some very cheesy orchestral. I was like, oh my god, you wrote this for like a six year old. I know this was supposed to be a kid show originally, but god damn, have some restraint. It's like, that's I, I like one of the kids of like a miniature version of Moss from IT Crowd. <laughs> miniature version of who? Uh, Never mind. <laughs> I didn't actually hear the name, though. That's what I was asking. Of Moss from IT Crowd. I don't know if you've seen oh, that. Oh, okay. Actually, I haven't. But it's those kids. I understand that some of them will be kind of, of course, kids, kind of ignorant. But the fact that they're trying this hard to be yeah, cheesy, they're not... very stereotypical. <laughs> it's like, am I just watching Homeward Bound with kids, but otherwise in a very bad light of... People because you know you had like, all those kids movies where parents and other kids were just kind of dumb and ignorant about things and they're like oh that's what's going on okay here's a solution <laughs> that's all kind of felt thinking okay this must be a family show I know that but God kids and the even like there was no stress whatsoever and then you find out at the end like oh we're just some imaginary deep voiced from a civilization here temporarily and we disappear without much of a word even though we were somewhat important and using this kid as a conduit to speak and we're gone and yeah nothing really happened we just kind of saved you from a huge solar flare uh, that's it I thought the doctor was good in that episode though. he was he was good and but it, yeah, he was, was, good a, little bit, he was a little bit cheesy at a few yeah. and it's a little more cheesy than usual it's just that the episode itself it's like oh my god you're really forcing it and this was like I think a new writer it was Frank Cottrell yeah, voice. Wasn't a writer. Hmm. Dude, you gotta not play so much on the cheesy kid stuff. <laughs> but Still other than that, yeah, other than that, I only had like a few minor complaints here or there. But yeah, it's a little bit character-wise an occasion, but nothing too huge. 
But um, I think I had to think for deep breath, um, but I don't actually don't think it was a huge deal. Uh, that's about it for me. All right. Yeah, for me, by the way, I turn off my cam because I just want to lay down on my side. I can't stand just sitting like... Wait, I can't stand sitting. <laughs> what? No you stuff. can't stand sitting? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a sit-down about it. <laughs> no. I won't stand. Right There's a seat right over there. <laughs> um, <It's> <laughs> For me, probably my least favorite episode, even though In the Forest in the Night is incredibly stupid, I think, in some senses, that's not the my least favorite. My least favorite is Kill the Moon. Because just the overall concept of the episode, what it leads to, the send-off, how the Doctor acts in this, how everybody else acts in this, is just... I don't want to call it stupid because that doesn't exactly back up anything. It's just it's written very poorly. How? Because <laughs> then I started trying to like wrap my head around this. I'm like, okay, so if I look up the moon, it's just a giant spider egg. There are spiders on the moon. They're trying to turn it into some sort of like horror episode, and I didn't think that worked. There was oh, just so many things wrong with it too. Like I thought the CGI wasn't that great. I thought the writing wasn't great. I thought the characters were good. Yada yada yada. On and on. It seems like I'm just like pounding this episode into the ground, but it's just, out of all the season 8 episodes, even though I had some trouble with others, this is the one, I think, that just made me stop for a minute. I'm like, okay, <laughs> do I want to continue watching this? Because this just seems like nonsensical stupidity here. I was going to say, with um, Capaldi leaving the area, I thought I kind of took that as a bit of a little incline, saying, you know what, I've kind of done these decision decisions before, it's up to you, screw it, I'm out of here, I've done this too many times. Yeah, I was just like, dude, you can't just necessarily do that. Well, I think that's why Clara was so mad. <laughs> yeah, I, I, could, I could totally understand why she just wanted to leave, because <laughs> the fan was like, you know what, fuck you, Capaldi. Yeah. I, I, I saw the doctor going like, okay, maybe this have done this before, but... screw you guys. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what else? The Caretaker is another episode I didn't especially like. It's I didn't feel it was necessary because it reminded me. I think what was it? The the, the what was the school episode with Sarah Jane? Um. Oh, sure. That's oh, episodes. I have to look that up. That's like season two right there. <laughs> yeah, that's like, yeah, I like that. That was actually making it seem like modern day was interesting. It was, that, that was all right, actually. I had K9 in it. Cool episode with Sarah Jane. I liked how they handled that episode more. So, like, because the way David Tennant did it with the whole, like, in getting into the school and just having fun with it, I liked that. School reunion. Yeah, school reunion. I loved how they did that. I wish that they, had they done this episode more in the style of school reunion, it would have been good. But it's just, this is like, there's school reunion and then there's the caretaker. They're the opposites to one another, I think. Yeah, and, so um,. I think those are the only episodes I didn't like. Oh, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Listen. Listen, I thought was kind of a stupid episode. Because I, I was half expecting, like, what, are we going to get the fucking Weeping Angels again? <laughs> no, we're not. It's not actually a monster. It, it's, it's, oh, oh, okay. It Something was about the monster being afraid. It was an event I uh, just, I didn't like, I guess I kind of felt cheated at the end of it. Even though it did make sense, I still felt cheated in a sense. I'm just like, yeah, this episode isn't that. Kind of left a bad taste in my mouth, if you know what I mean. Yeah. No, I like it. no, Elior, I do not admit that Tennant is the best doctor. We all know that, we all know that Smith is best doctor. The doctor no, is the best doctor. You guys are all wrong, it's the seventh. No, it's the doctor. <laughs> well, so best no, 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 I take yeah. the bet. Jester is best doctor. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm just a pony. Oh, no, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but yeah, that that's those are my least favorite episodes. Now we come we come to the end with the last the uh, last parts. The la so the, the, the speak words. Ah, come on. <laughs> All right, so I'll. Fucking hell! Just speak the words. You have the you have the question sheet right here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> typical. <laughs> this is typical on scripted <laughs> page. Um, I guess this goes to like uh all of you. 
What are your thoughts on Capaldi as the Doctor? Let's we'll start with Buck, of course, and work our way down. Do you think, basically, do you think Capaldi is a good Doctor so far? I think Capaldi's a great Doctor. Um, I didn't have a huge amount of confidence, actually, when I watched the first episode, because, I don't know, for some reason they now think that the first episode with the new Doctor, he has to sort of not quite be with it yet. He has to sort of get more into his groove or something. Um, well, they did that with Tennant. Hmm. Ten yeah, has that Christmas episode. He's like, oh, hey, I'm here. I'm out. And I was like, oh, I'm yeah. awake again. Out. I was like, yeah, oh, okay, uh, okay, I got my feet. Something we've done since the classic series, I think. I, I don't quite know why they always do that. Because, uh, you know, I... Because I sort he has of... regeneration sickness. He's kind of dumb when it comes to Time Lord he, physiology. He's like high I, after look at his regeneration energy. Having to be the doctor. Wow. Um, but yeah, after that, he, <laughs> once he got into his stride, he just came across... There's a far more sort of understanding kind of doctor and uh, being able to just deal with situations just like that, uh, knowing exactly what to do. Um, I like that he's an older actor as well, so it kind of does away with this kind of forced romance between him and the companions that there's been, you know, uh, from about Billy Piper and David Tennant onwards. Um, I ship nine and Rose a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I don't really remember anything with Eccleston. Um yeah, I, I like that he's older, so obviously that, that's not going to be an option anymore. But he set up Bad Wolf. <laughs> Did he? Oh, God, yeah, he was he's one that set up the whole thing, and that's when you didn't really notice it throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Capaldi is definitely sort of up there, I think. Possibly on par with Tenant is probably my favorite since the show came back, I think. It's just... He's right in there um, understanding the situation uh, uh, the whole time, knowing exactly what to do, like Mummy and the Orange Express, it's just a case of, as soon as he knows what's going on, he can just figure it out. Right. Like that. Yep. So, yeah, I really like Capaldi. Cam, what do you think? Uh, yeah, Sam, I also really like Capaldi, and uh, you know, one thing that I noticed about him is that he's a lot like the Seventh Doctor, because uh, both of them, like, they're, like, as Buck said, you know, he knows what's going on, and he's generally in control, and, uh... I lost my train of thought, but, uh... And he, he generally, he does the right thing in the end, but he's also really manipulative, so he's not at all above lying to, you know, to e even to his own companion to get to get things done. So I, I I definitely like that about him, and I also like the fact that it's an older actor this time. And not not to mention he's just an other he's he's a good actor. He does a great job in the role. And then also something else that I thought was kind of interesting about him because I know each doctor you know has a sort of overall personality, and then there's also just sort of like a quirk with each one. And something that I noticed that's kind of unique about uh, Capaldi's doctor is that he's good with gadgets because like he has. Because now he has, like, this little, like, workbench and everything kind of underneath the console in the TARDIS where he, goes, where he made, like, a little thing to, like, change dimensions on an object or just yeah. neat stuff like that. And then, you know, it's like, oh, hang on, the mummy's using this teleporter. He, he goes, grabs a screwdriver, starts working on it. It's not the sonic screwdriver or anything, really. He's just, he's just, like, messing with, you know, he's messing with gadgets and he's making weird stuff or... And the caretaker, he had that machine that confused the robot into thinking he was like a superior officer, and then, yeah, yeah, cool stuff like that. So yes, uh, ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. No, twelve out of twelve. <laughs> Jitters, what do you think? Sorry, hold on. I uh, was on mute. Um, the <clears throat> let's see. Paldi Doctor, I freaking love him. Like I said, I, I probably like him more than 11, and I liked 11 more than 10, and the only one I like more than more than 12 would be 8, because I have a soft spot in my heart for 8, because his radio plays are amazing, and uh, really need to be listened to. But um, 
12, I like him because he's basically pure logic, and uh, I can completely understand half of the stuff that he does, and I, I was like that from the very beginning. The very first episode, I completely fell in love with the guy, and uh, I, I get a lot of people complaining about, oh, he's so old, and he's so mean, and he's so he can't mean. ship it anymore. But it's like, but <laughs> yeah, it's like I can't, uh, who I can't cares? Ship. That's, that's what he was. That's what he used to be. He used mean. to be that kind of guy, and... Um, yeah. It's not really the fact that he's mean. It's that he just can't pick up on social cues, and he's, he he only sees logic now. And I can completely understand that. And that's what that's what I really like about him is pretty much every action he takes, I know why he takes it and what he's doing with it. And it's a very solid character. Um, and there there isn't really anything I don't like about him. Um, because again, everything makes sense for me for for what he's doing and and why. Like his whole assumption on soldiers, he was stuck on that because of just the way his mind works. When he decides something is a fact, he can't get over it. So he decides, oh, Danny's a PE teacher because it makes sense. It doesn't make sense for him to be a math teacher, so he's not a math teacher, and he's stuck with that because it was really hard for him to grasp any other concept. So uh, I'm being a bit of a psychology nerd here. That is a is a very psychological thing that that people do go through, and and I can see a lot of the signs there that he's very consistent with it. The only time he wasn't consistent with that personality was once, and that was only during one conversation on the Orient Express. But it was very subtle, so I didn't really mind. Um, it, it was more like he was trying to connect and trying to be more human again, but. At the moment, he's just very detached, and he can't help himself from being detached because he can't pick up on signals, and I, I really like that about him. Um, plus, he's still crazy, and he still cares about things. He just shows, a diff he shows it a different way, and I, I really like that about him. Yeah, and actually, if I can just interrupt a bit to add on something, you know, you mentioned he was crazy, and that's another thing. Like, Capaldi, like, you know, a lot of... The doctors have this sort of motif about him, and that's something I noticed with Capaldi. He definitely seems to be rocking this sort of, like, mad scientist image and everything, which I thought was neat. Especially in Into the Dalek, like, he really had that down. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I definitely saw that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's all I really need to say about it, so... All right, Jester? Hold on. Oh, there it is. So, yeah, I was going to say I definitely love Capaldi. He does seem like a nice... Um, refreshing but also nostalgic pull on the Doctor since he's like a, a few Doctors of old kind of personality being a bit sharp and everything and I still pick up on a little bit of something that he's kind of playing dumb a lot of the stuff because when I was kind of getting this more confirmed towards the end I think was on Death in Heaven was when Clara asked why um, Capali doesn't like hugging after all that eleven hugging and I realized this next quote was um, what got to me, I was saying, hugging's just a way to hide your face. I'm thinking, oh, shit, that means he, and me knows he's he was hiding a face before, and now he's not really doing it anymore. He's like, you know what, I'm kind of pulling away from this. I'm not going to give you a mask anymore. I'm giving you yeah. nothing. I'm just giving you straight logic now. And I was thinking, okay, so he is doing this kind of on purpose. So he's like, you know what, I'm tired of getting myself hurt, so I'm done hugging. That's why he's always so against hugging, is that what I was kind of finding out. And that was what really kind of got to me. I was thinking, okay, I can definitely understand that. You're tired of being broken, and now you're here, and then I'm just really kind of more excited for what they can do more with him. And also, I think what kind of made me laugh a little bit towards the beginning was when he showed his new costume, he's like, what do you think? And he kept looking down to it, and Jitter's just going to make comments saying, oh, butterfly, Clara. Because he had those little, like, red flaps right on the underneath. We <laughs> <laughs> called him that. Yeah, it's like because yeah, because they, they were making a huge deal about his outfit before the um, series showed because it's like thing and yeah, it kind of looked like threes with a little bit of a cape thing with the um, under layer being red and everything. Yeah, but, very John uh, Pertwee kind of looked. Yeah, at. especially since actually he knew he knows their family and is friends with their family. That I think that's one of the reasons why he's uh -huh. kind of this doctor now too. So personally, I really like him. He's a nice, fresh take. It doesn't have to be the old ship fest that everyone was going for before, which is annoying the hell out of me. Yeah. So, finally, something that's nice, a little bit different, and I really want to see, because I know the first season of a Doctor is usually awkward, because you're trying to get used to that Doctor, the writers are trying to get used to that Doctor, and usually by the second season is when they start hitting the stride a bit more heavily. So, I'm looking forward to seeing where he's going to go later. Alright. Yeah, Tennant's first season was... Not great, to say the least. Not really, no. Um, 
I believe that Capaldi is going to be an interesting doctor. I was very hesitant about him. That's just mostly because I, I was having trouble accepting him. I was going through Matt Smith withdrawals. But um, I like how they're making him... Uh, how, I like how they're making Capaldi be, like, you know, the... I guess different from what we're used to sort of doctor. Not the shippable one, not the one that's, like, you know, the, fan, like, the fancy schmancy boy toy of like all the girls and stuff. I think this Capaldi is taking it a lot more serious and bringing it back towards its roots and I think that's great. So yeah, I'm all for Capaldi. I look forward to seeing more of him in the future and yeah, I guess that's that's all I can say on oh, that. Um, I have one more thing I wanted to add. That actually, he did kind of he does kind of somewhat pick up on social cues because if you remember there was the um, whole dream thing that um, Clara was trying to do on Doctor's Neck, and he tried turning it around just so she could realize what she's doing. As maybe kind of think, okay, he is kind of playing dumb with this because he knows that she's feeling hurt, and then he wanted to try and pull it on her and see how she would carry out with things. Mm-hmm. So right. that's what I was noticing. I said we were gonna like talk about Clara, right? I think so. Yeah, but I know right. everyone has mixed feelings. I think we all know. You know what? We all basically just covered Clara anyway, yeah. so we don't need to go over. Yeah. It. Yeah. All right, so let's wrap this up with overall thoughts of season eight and whether or not we want to continue. That sh- that should be pretty interesting. So, Buck, take it away. Uh, it was probably an improvement on the previous series. I thought. Uh, but that's only because I didn't think the previous series was particularly good. Um, yeah, uh, there was probably only... Kill the Moon is the only episode where I had sort of a huge amount of big problems with, and I just left a sort of sour taste in my mouth. And Caretaker was just... Well, kind of a, just a sort of nothing episode that did nothing for me. Um, but the rest of them I all kind of enjoyed while they were on. Uh, there were about two or three like really good ones that I felt were very satisfying. Uh... I, I definitely want to see more of Capaldi. I definitely want to see more of him with Clara because I, I really like Clara now. Um, so, so yeah, it, it definitely leaves me sort of wanting more, but uh, it was kind of sort of middle of the road kind of thing. It wasn't like an outstanding kind of season overall. It was just sort of adequate all the way through. But I think that's the first time since the series came back that I remember not liking the finale very much, actually. Mm. So that that's one sort of big knock against it, I thought. It was just... Not a particularly good finale for me. But yeah, just sort of adequate the whole way through, but I definitely want to see more of Capaldi and Clara now, because I really like them two together now. All right. Okay. Cam? Uh, yeah, so season eight, uh, it's my favorite uh, season overall out of New Who, and uh, I don't know, like, uh, as I said, you know, I just really liked it. It had great, you know, special effects-wise production value, everything. Uh, the imagination behind it, Capaldi, is great. Uh, and so, you know, like, if I'll keep watching, you know, I mean, Doctor Who is my favorite TV show ever, so of course I'll keep watching it, and I'd like to see more of Doctor Who. And really, like, this season, it's it's a season that really just reminded me why Doctor Who is my favorite show ever, because I always sort of alternate, kind of, because, you know, I really liked season four of MLP. I was thinking, well, you know, maybe MLP is my favorite show ever. I was like, I don't know. I kind of dethroned Doctor Who, and then season eight, the Doctor Who camera, I was like, nope, Doctor Who. I don't know if you can really compare them, to be honest. Yeah, that's true. They're kind of hard to compare, but in general, you know, they, they, they are my top two favorite shows ever, but... Yeah, so definitely Doctor Who. Uh, it's awesome. This season was awesome. So, yeah. All right. Dinners? Um, Well, I'll definitely continue watching, unlike Sherlock. Um, <laughs> but, uh, oh! Sorry, I just can't. I couldn't handle uh-huh. that last one. Sorry. It was just I, I like too many twists. Couldn't couldn't do it anymore. You got but twisted no, so much, you're twisted. Yeah, I, yeah my, my twisty tie broke at that point. So. <laughs> Anyway, um, the uh, but no, Doctor Who. I'm I'm seeing it definitely. It, it's still really rocky right now. I I can see because uh, honestly, I'm kind of upset. I like the stuff at the beginning. It really introduced people to Doctor Who, but a lot of the writing that Davies put in really ruined a lot of the classic writing. And uh, I can see that Moffat's really trying to uh, c- 
correct all of those mistakes that were made, and he's trying to get back into the classics and trying to do his research better and, and make the old stuff relevant again, which is great, but there's still a little bit too much of that new stuff clinging on. It's not as bad as before. Um, my only issue, I think, with the series is that, you know, Moffat's still in charge, but that's just because I have some issues yeah. with his writing where he writes, he doesn't care about characters' families, he makes characters basically go from moment to moment, um, he generally writes female characters the same way almost every single time, and uh, he writes twists for the sake of twists, but not actually, he doesn't write them in a twisty way, so they just kind of, you see them coming a mile away, you always know who's going to be a villain, who's going to be in the finale, what the finale is going to involve, and it does get really annoying, so I'm hoping that we get some of the Davies style of plot progression, Moffat characters maybe, but some of his characters really suck, and... Overall, I, I, I'm excited for the series. I just want to see more classic stuff and m more uh, attempt to give a shit about characters. That That is my biggest thing. You got your stories. You're good. Uh, fix fix your overall how you do your finale. Stop trying to outdo yourself to be impressive. Just write it to be enjoyable. Stop handing people the plots and um, stop expecting your audience to be stupid and we'll, we're good. It's... All right. <laughs> All right, Jester. Oh, there's the mic. Yeah, I always have to do the mute thing. I always have to wait two seconds. But uh, yeah, anyways, overall, I did like the season quite a bit. Um, it did feel like it was better than the previous season as far as inconsistencies because there were a lot of stuff that were there was a lot of stuff that was left open, like for the Smith era that was over like two seasons. You didn't find out about something until like two seasons later, and you're like thinking. Okay, I wouldn't have minded a few recap or touch points on somewhere in between. There's a lot less of inconsistencies in this latest season, which I'm appreciating more when they're actually knowing what to give closure again, because I was thinking, okay, you made the Day of the Doctor's huge thing about finding Gallifrey, never address it until that season at finale. I'm thinking, okay, so you are aware that you've forgotten a few things and haven't touched on them since, so at least now you're trying to pull back towards what you were originally claiming and everything else. The only thing that's still bugging me about Moffat is that he's he has a bad habit of trying to develop characters, but then he ends up throwing them away in the process. I mean, with River, I mean, she was supposed to be this huge thing with 11 and 10, I and more adventures and everything else. But it's like you don't find out about their farewell, where she gets the screwdriver and everything, unless you look at a specific DVD special where it doesn't even show the um, Crying Towers or whatever it was. It was just like thinking, is this the last time we see her? Was what Smith was saying to his uh, future self, because there were a lot of paradoxes going in and out of TARS because they landed the wrong TARS at the wrong time with all their dates. He was thinking, is this the last time? He says, spoilers, and we never hear about that, but then we see River again in the main series, but the most she gets as a farewell is like thinking, like, spoilers, you might see her again after that one awkward, invisible kiss. Yeah. And then you get... Um, the, it's, to me, it's like thinking, okay, so did you or did you not just kind of kill her off there without giving her a lot of development, despite being this huge wife character where she only gets minimal screen time and gets more screen time in the video games and books, which aren't part of the main series. But as yeah. I'm, 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 that's what I'm kind of worried about with Clara now, though, is that, okay, you've kind of killed off Amy and Rory, too, by sending them back in time to live to death, Okay, you killed them off, but you never exactly give closure to the parents or the families. Okay, I guess I can look past your lack of interest in families until they, he tries to do that this season and say, okay, we're trying to get back to reality, but I'm kind of making it seem a little bit flat by putting Danny in here, who's supposed to be this big name in the series, only being a flat boyfriend saying, are you okay? Are you with the doctor? And then eventually being thrown away despite this hype about him. Right. But that's still don't really. So really. I do want to still stick, stick with the series. The only thing that's keeping me on the series is Capaldi because he's the Doctor. He's, his character usually keeps me pulled back in because Moffat keeps writing these characters and worlds like so flat and so jumpy that I can never find myself getting attached to anyone else other than someone who's actually consistent. And that tends to be the Doctor right now. So I'm really half worried but kind of hopeful the next season I could probably still stick around to it but I kind of have to considering I play as a Doctor character and have a couple Doctor blogs so yeah. I kind of have a catch-22 here as much as I want to be more hopeful 
But, yeah, one more thought was that I know I haven't really seen much of the old Who. I've seen bits here and there. I did like it. A little bit cheesy, campy then, but that was kind of the era. What I did like was RTD did know how to bring back plot points in the middle here and there saying, okay, hint, slightly, slight hint. And, of course, Moffat at that time, if you had, like, the one-off episode, those were really, really good. But then I feel like he was probably just tossing this because everyone was making a big deal about Blink in his single episodes, like Madame Le Pompadour and yeah. everything else. Yeah, it's because everyone loves Blink. They made in the showrunner, basically. Yeah. And I'm convinced uh, that's why it is. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Because I'm what I am noticing, though, is that Mark Gatis, who also did Adventure Mark Space, Gatis, which did Gatis, I'm sorry, I never say it right, he did that one uh, mockumentary of the first Doctor and the actual Doctor Who series. And from the episode oh, that was from the series... Adventure in Space and Time. Adventure, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. It, like, along with that and other episodes he's done in Sherlock and Doctor Who, he started off a little rocky, but you saw him getting better because he was doing repeats, and he seems like he actually can do consistency. And if you recall, Robot of Sherwood, that was by Mark Gattis. So that was also him, and I was thinking, okay, I can kind of see Mark being more of a showrunner soon if Moffat does, does end up leaving, but that's just me. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, but that's about it for everything I want to get out of my head and make sure I got all of my last notes. All right. Yeah, uh, I like this season. I think, it's like I said, it's a great start for Capaldi, I think. It has as few hiccups, as does every Doctor Who season, but like I said, not as much as before, I think. There's some good episodes, there's some meh episodes. There's not really a terrible, oh my god, I hate this episode, episode in this. I mean, if you want to count In the Forest of the Night or Kill the Moon or... <laughs> but but those, those, those we could put in the maybe section. Um... I'm definitely going to continue. I'm hopeful to see where they're going to take Capaldi in the direct in whatever direction they're going with. Uh, really, it, it's up in the air at this point. We don't we don't know for sure like what the next thing that's going to happen is, and that's what I think is great. It's just anything could happen. We don't have like a cliffhanger at this point. It's just bam. Let let's let's go out. Let's have a TARDIS. Let's let's go on many different adventures, and I think that's great. Uh, yeah. Overall, I like this. I had fun with it, I think. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I had fun with it. And uh, I'm just I'm, I'm just glad that, you know, we got all this in one go as opposed to six episodes eight months later than the other eight, six episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is the great thing. This series went by I, pretty quickly, too, because it was just one week, one week, one week, one week, bam. There you go. It's and one two-parter as well. Yeah, they even managed to put a two-parter in there, which I'm I'm grateful because finally two-parters. I love two-parters. Uh, Actually, that last series had no two-parters. That's that was a problem for me. Yeah, this is, this is the first time that I've ever actually encountered a two-parter live, as it were, because uh, you know I didn't get into the fandom until after season six. So you know, for episodes that I you know saw were. So this is the first time there was a two-parter where I couldn't just skip to the next one on Netflix. So that was... Yeah, I didn't, I didn't wait for the fandom until, like, the end of the season. Hang on a second. Oh, okay. Um, oh, you, I think you got interrupted at the house or whatever. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, what was he going to say? We might never know. Was it something important? <laughs> apologies, apologies about that. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Apparently I have dinner waiting downstairs. So I'm just going to wrap this up real quick. I think pretty much all of us enjoyed this and we're looking forward to it. Thank you guys for being here. This is a lot of fun to do. And yeah. with, yeah, the Christmas special is coming up. So if you guys want to see all five of us regroup for the Christmas special next month, put 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 it down in the comments. We'll see what we can do. Oh, boy. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. I hope my name turns back. And it's also, it counts. suddenly Wait, I'm going to be reviewed. <laughs> Yeah. Tell me, also, tell me what they think. Yeah. I'm curious I actually to know what they think right now. If if like we all have good chemistry, if we should regroup and stuff. I so, don't think so. All right. Um, la- uh, before I forget, also please go and subscribe to all these lovely people: Buck Brony, Cam Goes Pony, Jitterbug, Jester, <laughs> all that other fun stuff. And yeah, ha- have 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 a great Whomis coming up next month. Great Whomis. Yeah, Santa. Yeah, Santa Claus. Yeah. Bring on the bacon. Santa will be well, best time, Lord. Friends.
I don't know. Like, I, I kind of want to see them, like, do something where they just show that, like, Santa has, like, technology that rivals even that of the Time Lords, but he uses it, like, just for, like, giving out presents and everything. Like, I would I would like to see something like that. Because if, if they do something like that or, like, have Santa actually is, like, a lost Time Lord, then I don't know. Like, the six-year-old <laughs> thing maybe the trailer, like, oh. It looks a lot more like Alien vs. Predator to me, actually. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. and everything. I just kind of like it if they can make it seamless from fantasy fiction to their sci-fi. I usually like when they do that. Yeah. Jester, to send us off, can you give us an av- a, a Avante? Avante! Avante! That, that's perfect. <laughs>